seems that Dr. Waba is not online presently. Hello, hello, Marlin. I am S.K. Uh, Verma from ICID. Yes. Hello, good afternoon. How are good you today? Yeah, it's okay. How, how was the program? It was fantastic. We, it was well received by all our participants. And um, and uh, so are you ready to take the floor, Dr. Brahma? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I have some uh, one presentation. Are you able to see my screen? Yes, we are. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Varma, may, if I may, we see your screen, but um, it is showing it in uh, work mode. So if you could share your presentation and start the presentation itself. Yeah, okay. Is it okay now? Perfect, thank you. Okay. Please let me know where I have to start. You may start now, thank you. I can start? Definitely, please do. Oh. Okay. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. I am uh, Harish Kumar Verma, Executive Director, International Commission for Irrigation Drainage, located in New Delhi. And uh, <clears throat> I have uh, experience of uh, more than 40 years of working in water resources sector uh, with Government of India and the Asian Development Bank. So keeping the theme of the this African Young Professional Forum in view, so I have kept my topic as water security global perspective. So as uh, we are uh, all knowing, we are all aware that uh, the uh, world around us is changing because of the uh, technology, uh, this uh, demographic changes, climate change and other issues. And uh, <clears throat> so that uh, uh, it, it will not be the same as it was in the past. As we can see that uh, there is a lot of uh, uh, issues related with the uh, drinking water supply during the lean season and then melting of uh, the glaciers and other other, other thing so and then the, while while we are discussing the water and how to manage the water so we cannot uh, ignore all these changes which are taking place around us and uh, as we are all aware that uh, global population is increasing and by 2050 it will be around 9 billion and with that global pop increase in the global population, the water demand or withdrawal of the water for different sectors is also increasing. And we have uh, noticed that uh, global water withdrawal has increased around 1.7 times faster than the world population. So that uh, now uh, this is leading to basically the water scarcity uh, situation in uh, mo uh, many of the countries and many of the areas and regions. And uh, because of the growing population, the availability of fresh water for per capita, it is also decreasing year by year. And uh, as we know that uh, because of uh, industrialization, growing population and uh, demand for food, so demand for uh, water is uh, continuously increasing. And uh, we are seeing that uh, it, it is increasing at a much faster rate uh, than we have uh, envisaged. And if we, we can see that uh, how that uh, water uh, uh, demand is increasing, these are some figures from the 1900 to 2000 in uh, first top left uh, graph. And uh, uh, irrigation uh, or agriculture is the uh, basically 
it is consuming the most share of the water that means around 70 percent grow globally while industry is uh, taking around 22 percent and domestic around uh, 8 percent so <clears throat> and uh, if we see uh, uh, reason wise so in reason wise like europe so demand for industrial water is uh, much more than agriculture and uh, uh, other but in case of africa asia or oceania the demand for uh, water for agriculture is uh, almost 80 to 85 percent or so and the, uh, because of this growing uh, urbanization growing uh, industrialization and uh, other uh, factors that uh, there is a low, uh, <clears throat> growing competition among different sectors for uh, use of water and we can see that uh, the while uh, agriculture uh, uh, water uh, demand has gone 180 percent but at the same time demand for industrial water has increased to 425 percent so that means for other sectors the demand growth of the demand is much more than uh, agriculture sector and this map shows uh, the water scarcity situation around the globe and then uh, the dark red uh, portion this is uh, basically the most stressed uh, uh, parts of the world like in Africa and uh, part of India and uh, other places. So and then uh, water scarcity, uh, two thirds of the population uh, lives in the areas which experience water scarcity for at least uh, one month a year. So that means the majority of the population is living in the water scarcity area. And out of that two thirds, 50 percent of the people facing this level of water scarcity live in uh, two countries only China and India because of the uh, population and uh, so and, and climate change is uh, aggravating that situation of uh, water scarcity and we can see that there are the extreme events uh, of drought and floods and uh, which is creating a lot of uh, other problems and then in future uh, there was uh, there uh, this uh, shows us uh, as compared to baseline so and uh, what will be the position in uh, 2040 if uh, we can carry out uh, with the business as usual so we can see that uh, uh, there are a number of uh, countries which are in uh, red or orange so they will be having more uh, water stressed uh, living in wa more water stress condition so as per uh, UN Water 2013, water scarcity has been defined as a capacity of a population to safeguard sustainable access to adequate quantities of acceptable quality of water. Because uh, we, uh, it is not only the quality, a quantity, the quality of water is also very, very, very important in terms of water security for sustaining livelihoods, human well-being and socioeconomic development. So while we have to ensure uh, water security, we have to see for uh, the overall socioeconomic development also of the uh, areas and countries and region for ensuring protection against waterborne pollution and water related disasters. I, I, as I said that uh, climate change is going to aggravate the extreme events of uh, flood and uh, drought, which are basically the water related disasters. So we have to uh, look into it while uh, looking into the water security at the same time preserving ecosystem in a climate of peace and political stability. So that is the definition which UN Water has given in uh, 2013 in respect of uh, water security. Just uh, uh, let us see the uh, global figures uh, or global facts in respect of water supply and sanitation. So 30% of people, they lack uh, safe water supply and out of this uh, 30%, 844 million people don't have any basic uh, water supply facilities and 1.5 people have only basic uh, sub water supply. So that means uh, they can just uh, have enough water for drinking, but uh, not much water for other purposes. Only 39 of the 84 countries which have been monitored in 2015 have safe sanitation facilities. So that means the uh, position in respect of sanitation is uh, much uh, grimmer as compared to water supply. And in 2014, water stress was above 70 percent in 22 countries in North Africa, West Asia and Central and South Asia. So uh, keeping in view the scarcity of uh, water in uh, agriculture, FAO came forward to set up a uh, develop a global framework 
with the uh, association of number of partners uh, to address this water scarcity in agriculture. And the vision of uh, this uh, Vasaj, we have, as we call it, water uh, scarcity in agriculture. So this uh, group, the uh, vision is world whose food systems are secure and resilient, resilient to increasing water scarcity in changing climate. That means both cl climate change and uh, resilience uh, has been considered while uh, developing the vision of Vasaj. And mission is to support measurable, significant, and sustainable progress on improving and adapting agriculture system in conditions of increasing water scarcity and a changing climate using the combined expertise and resources of its partners. So it is very important that we have to come together if we have to address the problem of water scarcity in uh, agriculture and other sectors. And Vasaj had developed an umbrella program and the impact is to uh, agriculture productivity and uh, production has to be enhanced uh, then uh, outcome, uh, there are three outcomes which have been identified. Uh, there is a water productivity is increased to ensure nutritious and sustainable food production for all, lessen the impact of droughts and the risk posed by extreme weather events, and enhance women's access to adequate resources to raise agriculture production and productivity. So we have to include uh, gender and the women in agriculture. We have to consider their role, which is very, very important in uh, agriculture. As of uh, as per present estimate, around 820 million people they they don't have uh, enough to uh, enough food to eat. So that means they are living in uh, the power uh, hunger. They are facing uh, hunger in the, their countries. So uh, the uh, which are the orange and red, they are having more than 25% uh, uh, of the population is facing hunger, like in uh, some region in Africa and uh, 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 Asia. So and food security means everyone everywhere has enough good quality food to lead a healthy life. That is the definition of food security as per UN uh, in 2015. And world agriculture is uh, facing enormous challenge uh, because uh, in the next uh, 30 years, we have to produce almost 50% uh, more food uh, by 2030 two, two, and uh, double the food production by 2050 and key drivers for uh, this uh, uh, food, uh, challenge are increasing population and the dietary pattern is changing water demand is increasing and uh, that now now there is another aspect which is uh, taking uh, place is that a uh, lot of uh, crop area is being diverted for uh, uh, crops for biofuel so that is also uh, putting a pressure on uh, food security of number of countries and then uh, climate change and uh, water scarcity are other uh, drivers who, which are challenging the uh, this uh, <clears throat> food security challenge. Then if uh, we have to go for uh, sustainable development and uh, looking into all the uh, sectors and uh, all the uh, 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 areas in the regions, then uh, for sustainable development, we have to ensure water security, food security, and we have to focus on rural development because in uh, Asia and Africa, uh, most of the population is still staying in uh, rural areas. So rural transformation and rural development is uh, one of the important areas for sustainable development. And if we have to go for sustainable development, so then we have to uh, look into some strategies uh, to ensure uh, water security. and. Some of the strategies which uh, we can consider uh, for addressing uh, water security is uh, we have to look for the new infrastructure. We have to improve the functioning and operation of uh, existing inf uh, infrastructure. We have to modify the process of ex existing systems and uh, demands for water users. We have to introduce and con consider uh, efficient uh, technologies. And we have to also consider recycle and reuse of wastewater. So these are the five strategies which uh, we have to look into uh, if you have to ensure uh, water security and food security in future. So I'll now go into uh, brief details of uh, these strategies one by one. So uh, we can see that uh, arable uh, area uh, is uh, uh, as, as a part of uh, uh, this uh, different uh, reason. So different regions, uh, arable area is varying 
uh, from uh, 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 region to region uh, like asia and o oceania has a maximum area out of which uh, uh, green portion portion is uh, irrigated and uh, uh, orange portion is uh, basically arable area in that region and uh, 10 most uh, uh, the 10 countries which have a uh, maximum uh, arable and permanent uh, crop area are india usa russia china brazil canada australia indonesia nigeria and argentina as and these uh, data i have taken from uh, our uh, icid annual report because we are collecting these data from our national committees and we are compiling this information in our national report uh, our annual report if we look into the irrigation scenario out of uh, total irrigable uh, total uh, cultural area or arable area of around uh, 1500 million hectares only 300 million hectares is uh, irrigated uh, so far and uh, uh, <clears throat> that uh, out of that uh, the uh, emerging and uh, developing countries uh, have around 75% and developed countries around 25% least developed countries have around 4% of uh, irrigated area and the most uh, uh, irrigated area is uh, in china or india uh, around uh, 65 million hectare in uh, each country and then uh, rest is coming from uh, the usa pakistan iran and other countries so if we see that uh, lower most uh, left graph uh, that 81% uh, area is a uh, rain fed area uh, globally and that production is 60% but uh, out of uh, around 19% uh, irrigated area 40% production is coming so we can see that uh, if uh, area is irrigated then uh, we can get uh, uh, more uh, produce from the same area so this, th that's why effort is to go for uh, uh, creation of irrigation facilities and cover more area rain fed area under uh, irrigation so this is the same uh, uh, information which uh, has been uh, uh, presented in a different way uh, where uh, we have given that uh, how much area is uh, cultivated and how much area is irrigated how much area is drained and how much area is covered under drip and sprinkler in uh, different regions so as i said that only 21 uh, 300 million hectare area around 20 percent is uh, cult uh, of uh, cultivated area is irrigated and uh, area under micro irrigation is about 57 million hectare that means around 20 percent of uh, irrigated area so there is a, a ample scope to go for uh, micro irrigation under irrigated areas. So this graph shows that uh, irrigated area by uh, in uh, different countries. So uh, there are around 15 countries I have uh, shown. So out of that you can see that China and uh, uh, in, in India and uh, they, they are having uh, uh, more areas. So considering that uh, there is a st still a scope for creation of uh, new infrastructure and cover uh, more area under irrigation so if we see that uh, need why, why we have to go for new infrastructure is that to assure food security for growing population we have to cover more area under irrigated agriculture so that we can have more production from the same area and then if we have the infrastructure irrigation st storage structures then we can uh, uh, to some extent we can meet water scarcity and ensure water security and uh, because in climate change condition we have uh, the, when extreme events will increase so most of the rain uh, rainy water will fall down in uh, less lesser number of days and we have to store those water in case of india uh, there are uh, rainy season or monsoon season is ever for about four months but uh, out of that four months when 80 percent of rain, total rainfall of uh, india is falling it is coming only in about uh, 30 rainy days so that means uh, we have to store that water which is coming so that we can utilize that uh, when uh, there is uh, no uh, rains and uh, uh, it is a lean season so we can use that so the, the uh, new infrastructure is def definitely needed uh, to uh, look into and uh, mitigate uh, uh, impacts of climate change so that means increased water storage can help transfer excess water from the wet season to the dry season while ensuring a more productive use of water at basin level throughout the year so now uh, 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 if we, uh, we have to go for modernization because uh, the, our existing structures they are uh, if we are, they are not maintained properly so then uh, they are uh, 
uh, going into disuse or sometimes they are they are not giving their optimal performance so we have to modernize and why we have to modernize uh, the key issues to, to consider that because societal behavior is changing farming systems are changing better educated and more demanding water users are there who are demanding uh, reliable uh, functioning of the structure new technologies are available nowadays for automation and other things which can be considered performance has to improve improve we cannot afford to waste uh, productive potential or uh, productive uh, water which is uh, available with us and we cannot continue with the built neglect rehabilitated neglect scenario so what is happening once the structure is completed so funds for uh, operation and maintenance are uh, sometimes uh, very meager and uh, we are not able to uh, maintain uh, structure properly and they uh, go into disuse or their performance uh, is de degraded so we have to rehabilitate again and this cycle goes on so we have to break this uh, vicious cycle of uh, built neglect rehabilitated neglect scenario and current working practices are often outdated because uh, when the structure is de designed say 50 years or 60 years back so at that time they have considered what is technologies are available there but now they are changed so we have to consider that uh, while we have to go for modernization and once uh, if decide we decide for modernization then we have to look into the all the processes which are there uh, uh, in the irrigation system from storage to dive, uh, conveyance to on farm delivery and uh, to drainage and the pollution all aspects we have to consider while uh, looking into uh, the modernization process so, uh, and then the concept central concept of uh, modernization is to improve service delivery and for that uh, uh, we have to look into uh, water users uh, we have to go uh, enter into agreement service agreement with them and then uh, irrigation agencies have, have to work as a, a service provider not as a, just owner so they they have to provide service to the client so water users uh, and other uh, uh, users will become the client of uh, irrigation service provider and the icid uh, uh, has developed a concept uh, of uh, water uh, <clears throat> water use efficiency where uh, the total water demand Or withdrawal has been demand, uh, divided into two part: conjunctive part and uh, non-conjunctive part. And, and under conjunctive part, it can be used beneficially or it can be wasted as a non-beneficial uh, uh, withdrawal or uh, use. And then under non-conjunctive, some part can be recover recoverable and reusable, and some part is non-recoverable. So our aim has to uh, maximize the share of beneficial and recoverable water. so that uh, efficiency of the project as a whole and basin as a whole can improve so modernization <clears throat> we have in icid we have a working group on uh, modernization and rehabilitation <coughs> sorry they have come out with a definition so that modernization is a process it's not uh, just a one time affair it is a con continuous process of upgrading infrastructure operations and management of irrigation system to sustain the water delivery service requirements of users and optimize production and water productivity in harmony with the environment that means once we are going for uh, modernization we have to look into the service delivery part to uh, environment production and how to optimize the service delivery and and under modernization uh, there are number of steps are there so we have to first look into the current situation and uh, then we have to consult with the, all the stakeholders Uh, who are involved in, uh, in irrigation uh, system in including farmers and water users and then industries uh, and uh, municipalities and then we have to define the objective what is our objective of modernization once we define the objective and keeping that objective in mind then we have to analyze the entire problem and come out with the solutions and develop a plan and then uh, after that once the plan is uh, agreed by all the stakeholders then we have to progressively implement uh, it uh, gradually because it cannot be implemented uh, uh, immediately but we have to gradually go for implementation and in this third uh, diagram uh, uh, i have shown that uh, if we keep uh, uh, this uh, options various options for improving water use efficiency in four quadrant we are on the left side it is the impact uh, of on water use uh, efficiency from low to high and uh, on uh, horizontal side it is a uh, cost from low to high so we have to go for uh, the quadrant uh, and uh, say top quadrant and upper uh, left portion 
where uh, this is having a high impact on water use efficiency with a low cost. So we have to identify the options which are uh, uh, low cost option with uh, high impact. So like uh, ma management reforms can give that uh, option uh, at a low cost and uh, the result is very immediate or uh, an impact is very high. So in that way we can identify which options are to be implemented uh, in uh, initial stages and then how uh, we can move forward. Then in, if we'll have to see uh, the management aspects also that how the system is being managed and uh, that various uh, disciplinary uh, multi, uh, management is a multiple disciplinary exercise and we have to consider various options that uh, and we have to consider various aspects such as resource management, demand pattern management, distribution network management, safety assurance of uh, hydraulic structures and the handling of uh, natural and man-made disasters because sometimes uh, uh, people cut the canal banks and then uh, canal overflows and flooding the area. So we have to look into that also. On-farm management to improve the water uh, use, improving community participation, which is very, very important, uh, and development of alternative strategies for meeting new demands. And broadly, management models to be adopted can be characterized in two classes, steady state model and dynamic models. And future prospects lie in the field of a combination of steady state and dynamic models. And we are, there are various factors which affect the management and we have to look into that uh, in detail while carrying out the exercise, uh, which include climate change, changing cropping pattern, unforeseen developments in the area, uh, growth in demands and how to adjust those demands and then how to uh, keep the distribution network uh, in a good condition and reliable condition and then how to uh, uh, use a uh, newer technologies for data acquisition and management and technological upgradation and prioritization between the different sectors and the funds because the funds are uh, in uh, short supply. So how to use it uh, optimally. And one of the aspect is uh, very, which is very, very important is capacity development and capacity building. And this course is also as part of that uh, exercise of capacity building, we can say. So here uh, we have to look into various aspect uh, in which aspect capacity is uh, to be built and capacity is to be built at uh, different levels like infrastructure level then technologies, the technological level, institution level and all the stakeholder level. So we have to identify the gaps and then institutions and then identify the persons responsible for capacity development and carry out the capacity development in a holistic manner. Under use of modern technologies. So there are a number of technologies which can be considered and used uh, and available nowadays, which can be considered to improve the performance of the, the system. Uh, that is the uh, automatic data collection and transmission system or uh, use of uh, hydrological models and decision support system in coming in, in arriving at various optimal solutions and optimal use of water. Then use of uh, uh, remote sensing and satellite and drones in managing uh, our uh, fields and managing structures, managing distribution system and uh, uh, canal automation can also be one of the option which has been done in a number of canals in India and which is giving a very good uh, results at the moment. And then better uh, we have to go for better agro agronomical practices to improve butter, water productivity and we are all aware of uh, about uh, these technologies like zero tellers, mulching, SRI and la laser land leveling and uh, cropping, uh, cropping changes, shifting of the cropping dates and cropping calendar. And another thing is uh, happy cedar. Happy cedar is, uh, is it is it has been developed in India, which is a manual. Uh, uh, it can uh, plant number of uh, uh, seedlings or seeds in a row uh, at a different interval. And it is very, very fast. So it has been indigenously developed so in, in other countries also. It can be developed by indigenously or it can be shared. The technology can be shared between uh, different countries. Then uh, other uh, technologies uh, are use of micro irrigation and drip irrigation system, desalination and agriculture mechanization. So that is also happening at a uh, number of uh, places and uh, mostly in uh, uh, developed countries. So it is uh, almost uh, all the bigger, bigger farms. They are fully aut automated and fully mechanized. And the only uh, very small labor is managing the big big farms of even 1000 hectares or 2000 hectares. And then uh, an other option is that how to uh, reduce 
the use of water uh, in the field and for that uh, we we can collect the data at the field level during the, uh, using different sensors and in nebraska they have carried out some experiments and they installed soil moisture sensors and they found that uh, 35 million uh, us dollars uh, can be saved in terms of uh, energy cost if they increase water efficiently then the use of greenhouses that is also uh, is being practiced in a number of uh, countries and number of regions and uh, it can save lot of water and i have uh, we have uh, uh, seen uh, in india number of greenhouses where uh, uh, they were uh, previously going for uh, uh, cereal crops or other crops in the field now they are growing for uh, vegetables and uh, uh, <clears throat> floriculture flowers because there is a high demand for those flowers and uh, vegetables in the market then uh, gis and remote sensing i had already said about it that it can be used and uh, so that, that that technology should be leveraged for information dissemination to inform the beneficiaries about the supply pattern so that they can improvise and improve the utilization of the available resources so once we go for different technology which are available and we have to customize that as per the local needs and then we can use those technologies because the technologies as as such they cannot be they may not be suitable for the reason depending on the agroclimatic reason and uh, other factors so now in the last uh, in the, that strategy is a recycle and reuse of water which is very 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 important and why we should bother about this uh, waste water because waste water is growing in volumes now because of urbanization so a lot of uh, water uh, is coming as a waste and uh, we cannot uh, ignore to use it and waste water is a resource rich in nutrients if we Uh, withdraw. Uh, we can use uh, uh, withdraw energy from their heat energy and other thing. We can uh, with, uh, extract uh, that nutrients like phosphorus, uh, nitrogen, phosphorus, and uh, other nutrients which can be used as fertilizers. And with our, uh, without proper management, wastewater is posing a health risk uh, to the environment as well as to the humans. So we have to look into that how to reduce that water. and uh, they can contribute significantly to sustaining livelihoods and food security and wastewater is already irrigating about 20 million hectare of cropland in various uh, parts uh, of the globe and 10 uh, and if wastewater is not used then 10% of the world's population would starve if they not uh, get uh, food because the 20 million hectare is being irrigated using that wastewater but although after treatment not without treatment in majority of the urban area the activities in the wastewater sector are focused mostly on wastewater disposal than recycle and reuse so we have to look into the recycle and reuse of the wastewater and benefits of wastewater farming far over way than drawbacks and reuse of wastewater has not received much attention of the policy makers and then there is a time uh, now now this is a time that uh, we should look into that and then uh, develop the policies uh, and strong policies and legal framework at national state level so that uh, it can be used fruitfully and just uh, as a figure that uh, fresh water withdrawal in a year is about uh, say 4000 uh, billion cubic meter and out of that uh, water consumed in agriculture is just about 44% and 56% is released and uh, it is coming uh, as a waste water so we have to look into it how to use this uh, uh, waste water fruitfully and optimally and some of the facts uh, about the uh, uh, wastewater is that uh, wastewater can uh, as i said that 20 million hectare is being already used in uh, uh, 50 countries and as a volume uh, between 0.14 million cubic meter per year to 1642 million cubic meter is being used as a uh, volume 16 to 100% of treated uh, wastewater or 10 to 100% of generated wastewater is being used in uh, mena region and israel and different countries like iran tunisia syria saudi arabia they are using waste water in a very big way by areas 20 million hectare with raw water or diluted or partially treated or treated waste water that means 7 to 10% of the irrigated area is being irrigated using waste water and as a consumer of countries about 10% of the world population use food produced by waste water 42 out of 62 countries which are surveyed um, by the, this uh, particular group so they are using waste water for agriculture and four out of five cities use waste water for agriculture especially in urban and peri urban areas so our aim 
should be to reduce the generation of wastewater, to remove all the nutrients, to reuse the wastewater, and to recover. That wastewater is not a burden, but at but a, it, it is a very valuable resource and wastewater can be used for irrigation it can be used for aquifer recharge it can be used uh, for industries it can be used for heat heating and cooling process and after tertiary treatment it can even be used for uh, drinking purposes domestic purpose and it has been at number of places it has been used in singapore uh, uh, a lot of uh, 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 wastewater is being fully treated and it is being used for uh, as a for, for portable purpose and the treated wastewater is safe and reliable source of water that can be used to offset water scarcity. And uh, if we use all these uh, uh, in, uh, strategies, then we can definitely look uh, and go for uh, that uh, water security and ensure water security in the region. Thank you very much. Thank you. I have finished. Insightful. Thank you. For I, I, I'll i uh, stop sharing screen. I think uh, now my screen is not shared. I'm not able to hear you. Uh, yes, it's stopped now. Uh, Dr. Mohaba, would you like to um, would like us to proceed um, since you'll be moderating this closing? I understand. Or uh, yes, uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Cole, and thank you very much, Dr. Varma, for your nice presentation. And uh, and uh, then we uh, we can uh, give me the pleasure to to invite uh, Mrs. Carol Shushani. Uh, RECAR Coordinator, Arab Center of Climate Change uh, Policy, Chief, Water Resources Section, Climate Change and Natural Resources uh, Sustainability Cluster, ESCO, to give her closing remark. Yes, yes um, thank you very much. I've uh, been mostly an observer over the last three days, um, uh, allowing my colleagues and all of uh, you to engage very actively during this session. Um, I wanted to thank uh, Dr. Varma right now for a very informative presentation on water security and irrigation in the global context, because these closing remarks will allow me, thankfully, to share a little bit about um, ESQA's work on water security uh, as we are doing this within the context of the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development, the Paris Agreement on Climate Change, work on disaster risk reduction on DRR, uh, and Sendai, and of course, uh, the collaboration we have with the FAO and many other organizations um, on food security. In fact, the work we're doing on food, on water security is firmly grounded in work we are doing on the water energy food nexus in a changing climate context, and, a, and which is very much grounded also in a human rights based approach to water security. And when we think about water, we have to think about agriculture where um, in the Arab region and again through all um, most of the, of the world, water is consuming such a large significant share of, of water resources. And before I, I go back to just capturing some key messages from our interventions, I'd like to highlight that um, we are in the middle right now of the water action decade. Indeed, the international decade for water for sustainable development was launched in 2018 and extends through 2028. And the midpoint comprehensive review of this water action decade will take place at the United Nations headquarters in New York in March 2023. I signal this because, you know, often we think in short term cycles, but when we prepare for these global events that talk about the importance of water across sectors and especially so in agriculture and irrigation, there are several preparatory events that lead to this global and this global event in March 2023 will actually be the largest high level event on water in almost 30 years. The, the last one was in Mexico in, in Mara del Plata. So if you think about um, the strategic nature that we can have to, to voice the importance of water um, for the regions uh, that we work in, 
uh, this is an avenue to do so. So I encourage you all, uh, young professionals, partners on this call, to look to the regional preparatory processes that will feed into that global event in March 2023. ESCO is coordinating the event for the MENA Arab region. We'll be having a preparatory meeting at the end of 2021 and leading into 2022. Africa will be having one at the beginning of 2022 for that region. And, and the five regional commissions that support the United Nations system um, and the Economic and Social Council in the United Nations at New York um, will be providing those regional lenses through which we can advance what we consider are the principles and priorities related to water, including water, irrigation, agriculture, and across the range of water dependent sectors um, as we articulate that for a new messaging um, for the second half of the water action decade and indeed within the context of the 2030 agenda. So um, thank you for that opportunity to give a little bit of um, insight as you plan perhaps ways to engage. And this could maybe be something we could even discuss at the next uh, uh, African uh, youth water youth professionals uh, meeting, uh, inshallah, uh, next year uh, when, when we hopefully can even meet face to face. So I'd like to just maybe recap um, a couple of key messages we'd like uh, you to take home um, from our presentations on RECAR, ET, um, what uh, uh, Dr. Marlene thomas Cuthis and uh, Ihab Jnad spoke to you about at the beginning uh, for the first two days. And we want to emphasize that you have available to conduct your work, to conduct your research, the data sets, the analysis, the information generated under RECAR. We have intentionally created a regional knowledge platform that is there for you to access the training materials and data sets, but also allows you to call on us if you need more specific and tailored materials. And I encourage you to, to go visit the www.recar.org website, which is a collaborative platform amongst all the partners where you can access those data through the data portal, or again, get the request sheet where um, uh, dear Marlene will be able to respond to any specific needs that you are not able to access specifically on the site. If you do use um, this material for any of your work, for a peer reviewed press journal, for an article, please let us know because we are right now developing a regional knowledge node um, called RECAR in the Press, where we are going to be posting very shortly over 100 peer reviewed journals that have referenced and used RECAR to support um, work on uh, climate change, extreme events, agricultural productivity, flooding, et cetera. So if you have something that you have published on this, please send it on to us. Um, that regional knowledge node on RECAR with the press can be a way for you to disseminate the work that you've done and also create an opportunity for knowledge sharing on uh, water and climate and agriculture um, uh, through this regional platform available. And we already, again, have articles that extend throughout um, not only uh, the MENA and Arab region, but uh, throughout Africa and even these, uh, the work we have been done is being referenced in Mediterranean Europe because it does cover so many regions, the Ricard uh, Arab domain. Um, I'd also signal that you can go to that site. Um, you've heard a lot of very interesting information from Marlene and Ihab, but uh, there is a online tool available, a training tool uh, over the summer. Uh, Marlene and I had a RECAR webinar series. They were one hour sessions, six sessions that provide information on GIS tools for climate change analysis that allows to, you to access information on how to go a little bit more in depth on um, what we could we did not have time to provide here um, for this forum. But go look at it because they are very easy, digestible step by step uh, webinars that you can access through the site. And there's a training manual. And again, if you have any questions, please reach out to us. Um, uh, we have been getting a lot of good feedback and already over uh, 550 people registered and participated in that and we're looking forward to uh, extending that to you as well. And that's open access um, for what uh, to support um, any of your training needs and resources. And while we lo look at RECAR as a source of information for again regional climate modeling outputs, hydrological modeling outputs um, and, and how that feeds into vulnerability assessment. Um, it's important to think that we shouldn't only think about temperature and precipitation and ET. There's a whole range of, of indicators that can inform your work. I mean, we're here, I realize, focused on irrigation, but what about the farming community? Um, indicators that talk about heat stress, consecutive dry days and hot days. How about water availability in rural areas or, uh, or the heat stress vulnerability that might affect different um, demographics 
especially those who are working on the fields um, in agriculture or also in other sectors that are outdoor and that are very vulnerable to that um, external environment. Those other types of indicators can also help your analysis, um, not only specifically on agriculture productivity, but also the whole ecosystem that is related to the water, agriculture, and climate um, uh, circle of analysis. On aquacrop, you uh, have, I think, provided a lot of very good information, um, providing a, a clear understanding of how you can use uh, aquacrop to stimulate crop, crop yields response in a dynamic condition, not just now, but what it means over time with the daily data sets that are available through RICAR or other sources that you might have available through observation. Um, it only requires a few parameters that you can uh, obtain readily, again, through various sources to provide that analysis to improve uh, productivity and output. And this new tool about thinking about deficit irrigation it helps to optimize um, water resources in irrigation so that uh, it doesn't that so that crop yield is not adversely affected. And in fact, we can conserve our water resources and improve the productivity of, of each drop. So in closing, I'd like to um, extend my sincere thanks again to IS, ICID for convening this forum, um, which ESPA is happy to support now for the third year. Um, our thanks extended, of course, to Dr. Varma, uh, Executive Director of ICID, Dr. Um, Pandya, Secretary General, Dr. Renders, the President of ISD, and of course, our dear friend, Dr. Mohamed Wahba, uh, the Honorary Chairman of the ISDD African Working Group. I'd also extend, uh, like to extend our thanks to Ihab Shnad at Axet, who couldn't be with us today, but is working hard um, to continue with analysis in the field and uh, with our partners also at the League of Arab States and given that they are such a core partner of our work with RICAR. I'd like to highlight that ESQA has a long history of collaborating with the ISDB and Global Water Partnership, and we were very pleased, uh, Dr. Fakuri, to see you and your team um, working uh, through this forum, talking about financing in the water sector, and of course, uh, Anthony Bruma and her colleagues at ISD, and even um, our colleagues at ICID who have talked about the gender aspects uh, related to water and agriculture. Um, we've enjoyed partnering with you on that. And I'd also like to finally express my very sincere appreciation to Marlene and Zubeda, because this could not have been possible without them. Um, they've been working very closely, uh, Marlene, almost on a daily basis with Dr. Rahba trying to move this forward. Uh, thanks is appreciated. Uh, Extreme thanks is, is extended to them for all their hard work. And finally, thank you. Thank you, young water professionals from uh, across the region for your dedication and your engagement. Thank you for your commitment to thinking about not only irrigation within its framework, but thinking at it within the context of water resources and indeed the changing climate as we move forward together for a better and brighter future. Thank you very much. Over to you. Uh, Dr. Baba, we, we can hear you. you. Dr. Baba, you, you are okay. muted. You're on mute. Thank you very much, Dr. Carol. And really, I appreciate you're always uh, a supporter for us. And uh, really, uh, as you mentioned, uh, during the, the last two days, we learned more and more for, about uh, RECAR and, uh, and uh, aqua crop. And uh, this short two days is not enough, and we are looking forward for more support, for more training for the African young professional. And sure, together we can do more. Uh, then uh, I would like to uh, invite uh, Engineer Sami Ahmed, uh, Global Practice uh, uh, Manager, Economic and the Social Infrastructure Department from the Islamic Development Bank. Uh, Engineer Sami, uh, please, uh, the floor is yours. To give you uh, a closing thank, remark. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Uh, Assalamu alaikum. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. We have people, I think, from uh, different parts of the world. And uh, thank you, Brother uh, Wahpa. I will start by thanking you. It, uh, it's good to see you again, uh, as has been mentioned by uh, the other speakers before me that uh, Islamic Development Bank is really delighted to partner uh, with our, our organizations uh, in organizing these 
important events, uh, the knowledge sharing event. And uh, what I would uh, start by saying that uh, uh, for the last three days, my team members have been participating, contributing, and of course, learning uh, so many good things uh, to, from this very important event. And uh, I will share a brief presentation regarding the key messages uh, that uh, the team has uh, shared with the participants during the last uh, two days, different sessions. Uh, can you see the presentation? Is it on already? Yes, we do. All right. So uh, just before starting uh, this brief presentation, I would like to say that, uh, you know, Islamic Development Bank is a, is a development institution providing financing to the infrastructure projects mainly in, uh, since the last, uh, since inception. And as has been presented by my colleague that almost 12 billion US dollar has been contributed towards our member countries for especially water and sanitation sector. So last two years after the reform, the bank uh, uh, created a new business model. Uh, we have had a very detailed uh, review and evaluation of our successful programs and projects. And it was indicated that yes, Alhamdulillah, the bank has been providing financing to various sectors. We have been doing projects and in most cases, Alhamdulillah, very good and successful projects which were appreciated by our member countries. But there are two important areas which require the bank's attention, which require uh, more attention and more resources to be placed uh, of the bank uh, towards this area for to ensure the success of the programs and the projects. These were identified as uh, the knowledge in the sector, and secondly, the human resources. We are providing the financial resources, but are there enough human resources available, whether it's a health sector, whether it is education sector or water sector in this case, uh, we were concerned that over a period of time, the, the volume of the resources available is, is uh, reducing and as well as the quality of the resources. So this uh, really came out as a very important finding during uh, the new business model of the bank that uh, yes, financing is important. It will remain important. We will just continue doing that, but we need to really engage more, put more extra efforts in ensuring that uh, good quality human resources are available uh, and more in-depth knowledge is available. So these two areas really started getting attention. And the first thing that me and the team started doing, we, we, we reached out to our development partners uh, whom we have been working in the past, but now more specifically to focus on these two areas. And ICID and uh, these uh, activities related to the Africa's future water leaders and the young professional programs that we developed, all of these were sort of an outcome of, of these, these activities that we started. Uh, what we, what we had uh, done in, in this exercise to identify what were the specific gaps and how do we design our interventions uh, to really address uh, all these aspects in a holistic manner to, to get our programs and projects more effective. In the, uh, in the academia, we, we identified that uh, in, uh, instead of disciplinary and interdisciplinary research, we want to have transdisciplinary research, which, which will include not only the academia, not only the research institutions, but also all the stakeholders, the financial institutions, the users, the beneficiaries, and the service providers. It needs to go as a holistic group activity, which can really address all the requirements. Similarly, uh, for the practitioner's gap, uh, if anybody wanted to work, and I, I think uh, uh, Dr. Hala in, in this afternoon session gave a very detailed presentation on this aspect of asset management of the resources that uh, are developed, the, the infrastructure. We can build a very uh, fine, very excellent project of irrigation and drainage, but if it is not sustainable, if it is not properly operated and maintained, it will lose its efficiency very soon. So the, 
knowledge and expertise will require not only engineering and technology, but also we need to have information management. We need to identify and have the skills required for risk management and quality management to provide all the required uh, expertise and competencies. Uh, what are the communication gaps between the academia and the practice? They, they usually talk in different languages. The practitioners are more practical in terms of the program design and delivery and they are usually busy in number of programs and projects. And as has been mentioned, that they are busy in power fighting activities uh, with lesser scope or opportunity to go deeper into finding uh, innovative solutions. Whereas academia in most cases is very much abstract and their research and their deliverables are, are not directly re related to the requirements of the field. So how do we bridge this gap? So the ISDB started developing different programs. Uh, if uh, some of you are aware that uh, ISDB developed this young professional program uh, where we brought in the young professional, identified them, we inducted them in, in our teams so that uh, it was a win-win situation. The young professionals got hands-on experience of practical projects under implementation where they learned all the uh, different challenges uh, in terms of design and implementation of the project and the project teams and the bank team benefited from the energy and the innovation of the young professionals. So uh, both the sides really benefited and it, it really was praised both inside and in our partners forum this, this particular program and we want to really keep on expanding on, on this type of activities. Now we, have, we are also uh, sharing experiences with other international organizations like the one we are participating here now with you and uh, there, there are other activities where we are bringing in uh, universities who are offering different courses and different degree programs and how to collaborate them to bring them more efficiency. This knowledge to practice initiative that was developed, it was really uh, uh, as I just indicated that not only to generate knowledge, but to ensure that this knowledge has practical application. And uh, that with this link, we were able to really bring out excellent uh, results. The new Islamic uh, universities in the Islamic world program, we are working on this program where we will be doing joint workshops so that this learning exchange can take place. There will be student and the staff exchanges that will happen inshallah and the feasibility study of this water competence center for the region will also be developed. As indicated by my colleagues during these uh, different sessions that there are a requirement for innovative application uh, in our programs, uh, in our designs of the projects, as well as to have monitoring and evaluation and reporting of the results that we were required to happen. And for all of this, we need capacity development. We need capacity development at the bank staff state. We need to have uh, this type of expertise developed in the, our partners and in the executing agencies. And this can only be achieved. How do we achieve these things? Because as I said, that we are financing institution. So we, we want to uh, partner uh, with our other institutions who have expertise in this area. That is why our president, the new business model, uh, bring out the network of developers program in which uh, we are engaging uh, with our partners, as was just mentioned by uh, our colleague Carol and from ESCOA that they have these uh, different tools and they have this mechanism that can provide uh, reliable data, which is missing in most, most cases in our member countries. Uh, we are also engaging with research institutions and uh, we are mapping uh, these research institutions. A number of questions were asked during the afternoon session regarding how does ISDB work with the different research institutions. So the, the mechanism is that we will be mapping in our member countries. Uh, there are large number of institutions who have each one has expertise in one or two areas extraordinary expertise which we can define as a center of excellence and through that mechanism whenever a, a particular project or program requires some more detailed analysis some more detailed research so they can partner with these institutions instead of going only for consultancy services 
we will be engaging with the research institutions and universities to get that partnership and knowledge uh, for our efficiency of our programs and projects. So this is, uh, I just wanted to share uh, some number of initiatives uh, that the bank has uh, started already and we will be expanding on this going forward. And uh, with that, I would like to conclude my uh, you know, presentation by thanking once again ICID, uh, Felix and uh, our partners in ESCOA, uh, uh, the Ministry of Water Resources, uh, who are who organized the Cairo Water Week, uh, ESCOA, and uh, of course the Global Water Partnership and other institutions, uh, who we have been working with them uh, a lot in the past, and we would uh, be inshallah continue uh, to work and enhance our collaboration going forward. Uh, another important uh, thing, a message I would like to give to our young professionals is that uh, the uh, water sector is, uh, as has been presented by, by my colleague, that uh, the water sector policy, when we have processed it, uh, and, and it was approved uh, only uh, three months ago now, uh, it, it, is, it, is, uh, it was a complex exercise because, you know, water has uh, uh, benefits and engagement with almost all sectors. And uh, we really uh, understand and realize the importance of the professionals, especially the young generation, to get involved in all areas of our water service delivery, for design, for innovations, so that uh, we can address the, all the issues. I think uh, Dr. Verma very thoroughly and very extensively presented the, the challenges that the world is facing, and especially the, uh, the, a lot of our Islamic Development Bank member countries are facing in terms of the scarcity of water, in terms of the water use efficiency, the water uh, use management uh, deficiencies that we are facing in many cases where uh, we need to really focus in all these areas. So there is a huge potential for, for learning, for growth, and to really become the leaders uh, in, in the water sector. With that, thank you. Dr. Weber, again, it was really a pleasure uh, to be with all of you. Although I had to go out of the several sessions to attend other commitments as well, but we really look forward to continue uh, our collaboration in the future as well. O over to you, Dr. Weber. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Sami. Uh, really uh, very important information uh, you have highlighted, and also we appreciate all the support of the Islamic Development Bank uh, with regard to uh, bridging the gap uh, in human resources development. And uh, of course, uh, we have enjoyed today uh, the session of the financial uh, of the infrastructure of water project. And uh, really, we we learned a lot, and uh, and we found that there are. Uh, very important area we can cooperate uh, in which, uh, for example, today we, uh, as uh, mentioned by Dr. Hala, uh, there are many many skills we uh, are very important. We need to to support like the risk management, quality and assist management, and this also it is it is very important to be uh, given not only for uh, for. Uh, from the uh, financial uh, aspect to the uh, who are working in, in especially for financial, but we need it for engineer or for decision makers and maybe for other levels also. And uh, also, uh, it was mentioned that uh, uh, one uh, important number about 75 of the project already funded by the public, which means that we have to do more for the public, and uh, I see uh, the role of pilot farm is very important. We can uh, we can do more, and we can cooperate in in, in this important uh, point, uh, especially if, if we are looking for uh, a sustainable irrigation and drainage project. We need to have cooperation, integration. We we must have. Uh, uh, stakeholders, farmer, uh, 
technicians, engineers, until to reach to the top level. And uh, at the same time, uh, uh, we need, uh, I agree with you, we need to have more uh, practical applications. So we, we need to, to, to uh, cooperate uh, to select uh, the most uh, and recent uh, advanced irrigation technology uh, with regard to irrigation, uh, water resources management, drainage, and so on. And uh, I am very glad to hear uh, from Dr. Bagodir today about uh, the case study of the drainage uh, in Egypt. And uh, in fact, I am a drainage man. So I worked many years with uh, the agricultural drainage project in Egypt. And uh, I found uh, this project is one of the unique uh, project which already came to under the uh, SDGs goal. Uh, as we can, if we go back to uh, uh, more than 30 years ago, the situation, uh, uh, as you know, the irrigation system in Egypt, it was uh, all the irrigation, it is for irrigation, at the same time, adding more water to the soil, uh, uh, we, uh, we, we, we faced uh, salinization and water logging and so on. And uh, without this project, we, we, uh, it, it, it will be not possible to be at the same, uh, to, to the, this stage. As you know, the benefit of the energy system, just to maintain the soil, uh, 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 soil salinity and uh, and the water in the soil in a situation which help us to have a continuous production from the land. So, one of the main, uh, 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 most important benefit of the drainage that we we return the soil back to it is uh, it is original situation to be able to 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 continue uh, give the production to achieve the food security. Uh, also, uh, I would like to take this opportunity to, to, to mention that during these two days, uh, we learned a lot, uh, especially with, uh, with uh, uh, regional uh, climate change modeling, and you can see uh, how we can use it for the longer term uh, projection of the impact of climate change on not only for the water resources, but for the social and economic and so on. So we need to, to do more in this regard. And at the same time, I am glad to mention to you that uh, the feedback from the participant is very positive. And also I am glad to hear that some of the uh, participants, they are already using aqua, uh, aqua crop model and, uh, and we are looking forward to have uh, many participants to, to use our tools uh, just for to achieve our uh, sustainable development goals. Uh, this is uh, my comment and uh, before to, uh, to go to my uh, closing remark, uh, please, uh, uh, if, is there, if there is any comment or question, you are welcome. Dr. Marlin? Uh, no, please proceed with your final comments. Thank you. Carol? No, we're fine. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Yes, Dr. Varma? Hello, Dr. Baba. Uh, it's okay from our side. We like to thank yes. uh, you and uh, other partners who have uh, uh, joined uh, to support this uh, African Young Professional Forum. We wholeheartedly thank them for their support, and uh, uh, <clears throat> we like to be partner with them in other future events also. Thank you. Jeet Sami. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, 
as I have already indicated, that the bank is, is really uh, delighted to be part of this exercise uh, because it, it covers both our immediate requirements, the knowledge and building the human capac uh, capacity and cap capital for the sector. And uh, we really look forward to engage with our uh, partners and uh, getting more closer. I'm sure my team members will be engaging with uh, ESCOA uh, regarding that uh, availability of the tools and the different training modules. Maybe what we will do uh, going forward, we will be uh, developing some of our internal tools as well. Uh, so we can work together with all of our partners in, in uh, sort of designing the tool. And while we are designing, I'm telling the colleagues that we need to engage with the beneficiary part so that the young professionals need to come in. They need to really work with us in identifying the needs and the areas that will really be beneficial for their work so we can work all together to, to address these needs. So once again, thank you to you and all the colleagues for, for this very informative session. Thank you very much. And in fact, we are very proud to be part of this big family. And we together, we can do more. Uh, uh, with this, I, I would like to give my closing remark. Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Excellency uh, Dr. Harish Varma, Executive Director of ICID, Mrs. Carol Shoshani, uh, RECAR Coordinator, Arab Center for Climate Change Policy and Chief, Water Resources Sec Section and Climate Change and the Natural Resources Sustainability Cluster, ESCO. Engineer Sami Ahmed Farouk, Global Practice Manager, Economic and Social Infrastructure Development Islamic Development. Distinguished participants, I would like to start by thanking each and everyone who has contribu contributed and worked hard with us during the past couple of days. I believe we are just starting along journey and uh, that I, I am very hopeful it will be a successful one. I believe that all of you have well done through the three day forum. That you is not enough. In fact, we have learned a lot and enjoyed all the valuable information given during the sessions. I would like to pay my, my deep respect to all the participants for their positive participation in the forum. I hope that you have learned through the forum will help you a lot in your duties and lead to achieving sustainable development in the future of your own country. As we have heard over the past two days, there are a great challenge around to meet our needs for generations to come. The past two days, we have come up with the capabilities of RECAR for the assessment of climate change impacts on water resources and for the capabilities of aqua crop software for the estimation of crop water requirements, which could help you, us in the planning for irrigation scheduling and, do, and doing a real-time irrigation management under water shortage condition. Although also there are still some gaps in the role of gender in less developed countries, especially in Africa for achieving SDGs and enabling and empowering their roles would help a lot for filling the existing gaps and creating solutions. Capacity building for gender in less developed countries in Africa is a must, and we all are responsible to cooperate and take actions. Financial support for sustainable projects is an important key for our future. So capacity development for, for all levels, such as young professional, technician, engineers, researchers, user public, gender, and of course, decision makers must be on our top priorities. 
and those supporting pilot farm for new advances and advanced advanced technologies for sustainable projects are needed to be implemented in an integrated way for multi benefit for capacity building at all levels. Excellencies and and gentlemen. I, I should like to take this opportunity to express my appreciation to our great partners. His Excellency, Dr. Mohammed Abdelati, Minister of Water Resources of Egypt, to the ICID, to His Excellency, Dr. Felix, President of ICID, to Secretary General, Dr. Bandia, to Executive Director of ICID, Dr. Varma, and of course, to the Economic and the Social Commission for Western Asia, ESCOA, for the financial and technical support, a special thanks to Mrs. Carol Shushani and Mrs. Rola Magdolani, and a special thank for Dr. Marlene for her excellent moderation for the sessions. To the Islamic Development Bank, for the technical and, and, and financial support, and a special thank to Engineer Sami Ahmed Faru, uh, to Engineer uh, Baghoudir, and also uh, for uh, uh, for all the colleagues at Islamic Development Bank. I would like also to thank the Global Water Partnership Mediterranean, a special thank to Dr. Andy Roman and uh, Alexander's uh, uh, candor, uh, And finally, of course, we cannot fail to thank our hosts, the ESCOA, for their excellent financial and technical support. Excellency, ladies and gentlemen, since the African Young Professional Forum is at least a biannual event, we look forward to seeing you again in the 5th African Regional Conference in Marrakech, uh, uh, March 2021. We hope the situation will be better to be able to organize it on time. Uh, at this, I would like to close my remarks and officially announce the end of online uh, third African Young Professional Forum, which was held under the platform of Cairo Water Week 2020. Wishing the future prosperity for all our countries, and thank you for your attention. Thank you.